Yo, David. Hi, Rafa. Now it's yes. working. Are you free or are you busy? No, no, I'm, I'm free. I'm free. I'll have a show with Andreas in an hour, but until then, I'm free. In an hour? Yes. Okay, then start recording. You got an hour. Okay, all right. We're recording. <laughs> Welcome, yeah. David. Okay. Now, in the la um, the last time we spoke, um, I, I didn't think you would call it um, King um, Attila. Um, I had no idea that. Um, um, so now, um, because it's called King Attila, many people think the video is going to focus on Attila. Unfortunately, it doesn't focus on Attila, just on Attila. I'm saying unfortunately because there's um, certain things that um, people really, really need to know. Um, the thing is, many Hungarians added me um, and, and Germans because, of course, they're interested in, in Attila. Yes. yes. Now, the thing is, many people, um, they think that um, the history that they learn in school, in um, what's it called, in Hungary or Germany or anywhere, they... Um, They believe half the things and they think many of the historians in the universities and the so-called re researchers are working for them. No, the researchers are all controlled by um, um, the state and uh, all these institutions and they will say what they're taught. So um, when you make a video, um, please put these things there. One, have a look at the first picture I've just sent you. Attila the Hun, he was the leader of the Huns for 19 years. Have you received it? Oh, wow, yeah, nice, nice one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, the thing is, from the year 434 AD to 453 AD, of course, um, if anybody reads all my books, they'll soon start to click on and understand who this Attila the Hun really was. Now, the thing is, um, let me send you a bit more information about Attila the Hun. And they say the only battle he lost, or the main one, they say, um, some t in Western Europe, they call it the Battle of Chalon en France. Yes, or um, um, sometimes they call it Battle of Catalonian Plains. Catalonia, notice again. Catalo You've heard of this battle, yes? Actually, no, I'm not familiar. Um, they say th this is the battle, you know, where he got defeated. He was a loser. He couldn't defeat the Vatican and um, the Visigoths helped the Vatican. So now that um, if anybody looks at Wikipedia for this battle, they're going to just say June the 20th was the main day of the battle. But um, most people don't know, according to Vatican historians and the Jesuits and the Catholic Church. And, you know, these monks, whoever wrote down the so-called history, the battle started on the 19th of June. Of course. And on that day itself, there was 50. 15,000 casualties suffered by both sides. And then Attila was defeated um, on the 20th. Can you see? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the thing is, many people, um, you know, of course they're going to say these documents are from the 4th century, but they had to change it to the 15th, 16th century because we got a problem. If these documents are from the 4th century, it's even worse. Now let's have a look at these Vatican documents that are um, found in. Um, um, you know, in the um, in Venice and other places by the humanists. So if anybody reads my book, Skull and Bones and The Last Crusade and everything, they'll soon start to understand. Now, Attila the Hun represented the Muslim threat to the Vatican. Right. And he was he was known as a Saracen. Hey, wait a minute. They're telling us the Saracen are Arabs, but the Saracen simply means the sons of Sarah. Israel. Yes, that's the meaning of Israel. Israel means the God of Sarah or the sons, uh, the ch children of Israel, the children of Sarah or the Saracens. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now if the Middle East people are the Ishmaelites, then uh, um, the children of Sarah are the Saracens. Yes. So why the hell are they calling the Muslims Saracens or Israel the, or the children of Sarah? So now, so now this is one in um, these images, you know, from the 16th century. But of course, they'll say they're older, you know, in Vatican city states. Attila the Hun is the king of the Saracens and the king of the Muslims. Yes. Okay. Now, um, the thing is, when people look further at Vatican documents, yeah, and you go further and you have a look at them. Yeah, the, these things are, are very important because some people are going to say, why does David keep bringing this Quran and this Islam? Because uh, let's have a look at this more now. Um, here is more um, so-called history, yes, of um, the so-called who are the Huns. 
Now, according to the Vatican documents, and, you know, there's many things like if you go through Josephus or Herodotus, everything. Anyway, it turned around and says that the Jews, the Khazars, the Jews marched from the Caucasus to China. You know, they were going around in circles or they say after the exodus for, you know, for a long time, they were lost in Asia and these Khazars. And it says that their king was called King Felimur or, you know, sounds like Timur or Timur is, you know, Tim. Adam, yes. Anyway, it says, whose great-grandson was called Judas. And, and Judas is the ancestor of Hunnus, of the Hunnus. Yes, or the people who had horns. Now, the thing is, it's important for the people of Hungary to know this, because I'm going to go through this even more. Yes, that everybody thinks Hunnu means horn or something. But no, if you, if you consider, yes, that all these... Um, you know, in Central Asia, they mysteriously have Arabic writing, the Uyghurs and um, the Uzbeks are, whoever they're the last few people who were left there, who didn't migrate. Or, you know, if you go to Bashkor Tostan, Bashkor in Russia, Bashkaria. Yes, or if you went to Tata, Tataria in Russia and Kazan, they're um, Caucasians. And um, right. the, um, those people, um, um, they use Arabic there and Arabic writing. But anyway, the grandson of Judah, who is this so-called Judah? Yes. And now the Hunnus, they came and they conquered Germany and Gaul. So who are these people? But now they're called Jews. But the Vatican says they're Jews. But if we go to the opposition, the Quran, it says there's Bani Israel, uh, which means the, the children of Israel, and it separates them from Judah. Yes. So now the thing is, um, of course, the Vatican is going to call them Judas, the betrayer. Yes. So, but the Vatican is the betrayer. They um, um, reversed history and then they put 19 years, got defeated on the 19th. But anyway, check this out. So these people are called Hunnus or people with the horns. Now, the only people we can think of in Europe with the horns in history in a big way is the Vikings. So let's uh -huh. we'll, uh, now I'll bring in Anatoly Fomenko, the Vikings and Germanica and Gaul. So now we've got these people who've come from Asia. Now, when they say China, you have to remember Tibet was known as, you know, um, was known as in the area of Uzbekistan and those are the places in many, many of the times in medieval times where there, where there was Prester John. Yes, the real John of the Acropolis. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, so now we've got this thing. So um, these people, they're marching to Europe. Yeah. Um, um, yes. So now they're marching to Europe. And let's see what the Vatican records show. So now if we consider the 1,000 years of forgery of history, we have a serious problem. Yes, because now let's look at this. The Lagarde d'Attila, you know, Sebastiano Erizos uh, and um, Niccolo uh, de Casolo, you know, all these humanists and whatever, uh -huh. just do it, it's monks, Dante and the rest of them. Now historians now, because they've changed it since the 16th century, let's look at this. The Huns and their kings are depicted, yes, they were all dog-headed, Yes, or they had horns and they were all Muslims. All of them were, were Muslims. Yes, according to, to the historical record. Th these records were changed only in the 18th century. So yes. before the 18th century, in, in these, um, you know, what the monks wrote down and the Jesuits wrote down and everything else, um, you know, the um, Huns are called Muslims. But now then, if we consider Anatoly Fomenko's timeline, yes, and um, uh, um, the so-called Prophet Muhammad, yes, and if it, he's 6th century and he's moved to the 16th century, then this means that Attila and the Huns, they were Muslims even before Muhammad existed. Because Attila the Hun is 4th century, if we add on the 1,000 years. Right, if you see? the timeline is somewhat correct at least. Yes, yeah. and now this is why the Quran says that are Muslims and um, existed before the Prophet Muhammad. Uh -huh. And he was just a new leader. And then the thing is, um, when it turns around and says that, um, you know, when the Vatican, you know, brainwashed, um, you know, um, some of these Huns and they joined them, the corrupt ones. Yes. In the 15th, 16th century. Yes. And the thing is, um, and what do you call it? You know, the Vatican states were fighting the Mohammedans and the Mohammedans were Huns. Uh huh. Yeah, here it says yes. Mohammedan Hans. And just to be clear, what it would be the distinction, just because it all gets mushed together in, in the past, between Genghis Khan and Attila the Hun? 
Now, the thing is, Genghis Khan will have to focus on a different time because... Okay, um, but it's clear that they are separate to, personalities, so just to make that... Just controversial to, information. Yes. But just to make it so clear, they are two different individuals in your understanding. Genghis Khan and Attila Dahan are two different um, individuals. Uh, the, the, um, uh, Attila Dahan is a genuine character. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. But um, Genghis Khan, they've mixed together several things. All right. Now, okay. um, so the thing is, because we, we, there's so much to talk about Genghis Khan, I'll have to go through that another yes, time. No problem. Yeah. Just um, because Thank I don't you. have the um, pictures ready. Yes. So now let's go through more of this information. Yes. So now um, we've got Jean de Utremus, and he says the Jews marched from the Caucasus, whatever, and they were called Hun Huns. So now if we consider um, 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 the thing is, all these documents that we've got about Attila the Hun, the only things we've got about him is the oral tradition, you know, people in Bulgaria, in Serbia, in Romania, in Poland, in Germany, and Austria, the oral tradition is so mixed because I've got people who are coming and saying, oh, David, you're wrong about this, you're wrong about that. And the, um, the thing is that uh, they think it's a race. Yes, but now uh, uh, many of these histories we've got in the uh, were written in the 18th, 19th century, let's say in Budapest or in Vienna, and they were written by the people who were in right. power. Recent, uh, written yeah. in Hungarian or in Serbian yeah. in Belgrade, yeah. and uh, and people really believe these things. They really believe these historians. Even my history so, teacher, just saying, I had a history teacher, and she was Hungarian. She fled uh, early in communism, and she always told us these stories. But they were always from the, of course, Hungarian manuscripts, most likely yes, already so written now in let Hungarian. Me, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll give you an example. Uh, um, now the thing is, you can ask anybody who lives in Hungary right now. The government is promoting this. Obusts Taza National Park. I don't know how to pronounce it. Opus, Opus Taza National Park. I've sent it to you. Now this is this is probably the most famous park in the whole of Hungary, and it shows when the Huns, the full history of the Huns, and they say they came and they invaded Hungary. Everything. It is a national heritage park. Now check this out. It was created in 1978 by the communists, whoever these communists were. They've given title as communists or nationalists, you know, with the Vatican involved and everything. And, yeah. they, and, it's, got, and it's got 19 historical buildings um, in this park. And they, and, they've got, and they show how the Huns, the full history, the so-called fake history that they're giving of the Huns. Now, this park is obviously being updated and you have millions of people going out there throughout the years. Now, the statue of Attila the Hun was inaugurated in this park on August the 19th this year. Oh, yes. interesting. Uh -huh. and, yes, and it's, no, the thing is that I've given you a few things, but I mean, if you go through the full history, yes, of Attila the Hun and in Hungary what they're doing and many things, it's just, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not lying to you. You can go through it, you'll see 19 this and that and other suspicious data that, um, you, uh, that if you go through it all, you'll find that the full data is suspicious. That you will turn out and think, no, this is just bogus history. Yeah, yeah even this article or the inauguration, whatever it refers to, was published this year on August 19, of course. <laughs> Uh, no, that was it the day stop. that they um, unveiled the statue. Okay, they yeah. had a big festival. It just doesn't stop. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so now the thing is, um, um, let me send you more information. I'll, I'll send you um, what um, Anatoly Fomenko and other people showed about Attila the Hun, so that um, then you will understand. Now, Dante is very important because now Dante is is showing that these Huns, um, etc., you know, Muslims. Yes. But, but um, the thing is, if we go to Anatoly Fomenko's timeline, then it, this means that um, the Huns were called Muslims even before the Prophet Muhammad existed. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then the Prophet Muhammad, according to, um, you know, many Vatican, you know, so-called documents, yeah, was the leader of the Huns. So who are these Huns? So now, um, he, Dante was a forerunner of the humanist movement, etc., etc., Humanist movement and the end goal of humanism is transhumanism. So now, last time I mentioned Hunsrich, but um, uh, I didn't think this video would become so big and um, people would focus on Attila the Hun. You know, I didn't realize you'd give it this title. Yes, well, well it was, look. yeah, it was my fault, but apparently people are interested and, you know, I hadn't heard about it yet yeah. and I had to yeah, pick uh, a title. So <laughs> this video, call it King Arthur. Attila the Hun. All right. Because um, it, m people must know it's the same person. Now, have a look at this. The Huns in the Middle Ages. Now, up until World War One, 
There was no such thing as people saying, ah, he's German. These are modern terminologies. People in Germanica were called Huns. I'm being serious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, have a look. I've sent it to you, history.com. Yes, in America, even in the United States. Yes, and um, the thing is, and uh, another thing is, yes, that um, the thing is, even if you went to Ireland, because Ireland has been, um, you know, become Catholic. Yes, so now they're fighting the last few people in the north who were Protestant. But um, the thing is, even where did the Protestants get their Bible from? So now in Ireland, anybody who protested against Catholicism, now I've sent you um, a piece of paper, you can have a look. Even to this day, they call these people Huns. Yes, um, even to this day. Now, the thing is, in World War I and World War II, because the German language still hadn't dominated the people in the lands known as Germany today, this is why they didn't know what to call this place. Sometimes they call it Prussia or Parusha. Yes, uh, 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 mm -hmm. or, or Paul Russia. Yes, or Belarus. They mix it together. Same like Belgai, Belgum, Belgium are the are, are, um, Bulgar descendants. Yes, well, anyway, so now I've sent you Wikipedia. The, the usage of the term Hun to describe Germans, um, it, it, it was slowly disappearing because, you know, the people in power were sl slowly removing it. Even Winston Churchill, he said, there are 70 million, you know, like, you know, Huns, blah, blah, blah. Some who are curable, you know, in, it means that we can change them, and others killable. Yes, and you know. Maybe let me um, just bring um, up one thing that it's always mentioned in the time of the, let's say, early 20th century. Obviously, you know, the, the Nazis were against all kinds of minorities and so on, but apparently the communists were as well. And there again, we can see that it's just, you know, uh, of course, heads of the same uh, hydra, uh, you know, heads of the same hydra. They the trashed, same they destroyed Eastern Europe because you've got an hour. Yes, I'm not, I, I won't go on to the Don't Nazis. Worry, I'll, I'll, I'll take as much time as necessary. Just go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, oh, right. Okay. The important thing is now somebody will turn and say, how can he call the Germans Huns? He called them Aleman last time, Barba Aryan last time. Okay. Now let's have a look at this. When the Europeans went to the Middle East, they divided those places into there was no such thing as Syria. There was no such thing as Iraq. There was no such thing as Kuwait. It was all Ottoman Empire. And today yeah. some people will say, ah, they're Kurdish or they're Turkish right. or they're, they're Iranian or they're, um, what do you call it, Assyrian. Oh, these are Syrians, not Assyrians. Oh, oh these people are Alevi or these people are Alawi. Wait a minute, they all live within a hundred kilometers. Oh, yeah. these people are Arabs. Oh, these people are Palestinians. Oh, these people are Jordanians. So they've already given them so many confusing titles on purpose. Now, the thing is, um, the term Hunnu, they started calling people these um, with the name Hunnu because they came with horns. Yes, um, the Vikings. Now, you might turn out and say, why the Vikings? So now the Germans were called Hunnu. And they were called Aleman also because they were the men of Allah. And somebody will say, yeah, Wikipedia says they're called all men. Allah means almighty, all on, all encompassing. All these English words uh, for all, everything came from the word Allah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, the, this Germanic word. But um, anyway, so look at these things, whoever this Churchill man, you know, whoever he thinks he was, he's turning around saying these people are killable, you know. Uh, and um, what do you call it, later that year, um, uh, you know, during this time, F F Roosevelt referred to the German people, saying that, um, eh, whatever. But anyway, they said, you know, mal malignant Huns, blah, 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 whoever he thought he was. Yeah, I've sent it to you, it's on Wikipedia. So now, the thing is, um, let me send it to you even as far as back as World War I, is because the people were in villages. Yeah, they didn't speak German, yes. Um, the modern German. So now the thing is, um, they were called, uh, um, um, you know, the Huns. Yeah, mm -hmm. Huns, or they were called Aleman. Even in, in France, the modern French language, they couldn't hide it. Alemania. Yes, they couldn't hide it. Yes, and uh, and that includes the um, the Western and, and Northern French and, um, you know, Denmark and all these other places. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, the thing is, and then when they went to Latin America, they called them Hunsrich. Yes, Hunsreich. Yes. So now let me go through what um, Anatoly Fomenko has shown. Um, I've, do, I've done a screenshot from his book. You know, you can um, um, post these on the video. It's important people that people know these things. So now the thing is, it turns out says, um, um, wait, let me send you, um, 
I've, I'm sending you two things from Alan Tolley from Encos. Um, yeah, um, let me see two. Should I send you two? Yes. So now that from these two, um, Anatoly Fomenko goes through German documents. You know, they've already forged these German documents. God knows um, how old they are, but um, Fomenko says they're probably from the 16th century, updated, modified, etc. He goes to the saga of Tidrek. You know, Tidrek is supposed to be Theodoric or known as Frederick of, of Germanica. And um, events that took place in Russia and the land of the great ones. Yeah, and um, the land of the great ones was known as Wilkinus, or in Latin, Vel Velsinus, or Velkinus, or of Russia, Veliki. Yeah, mm -hmm. or, 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 or Velkin, or Viking. Velkin, Viking. You understand? Russia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Velkin, yes. Or, or as you go further west and south, mixed with the Latin. You know, they were mixing all these things together, you know, just to give um, different names and everything. Wiltinus, Sagas. Anyway, they call these people people Mongols invasions and whatever. Yes, and the and the Russian prince Vladimir and Attila and these chieftain or or the king of the Huns, they both lived at the same time. Yeah, and they call them Velkinos or or Velkinos Val, Valkings. Yes, mm -hmm. and anyway, so these people with the horns. Yes, I've shown them um, Attila. Uh, um, What's his name? Um, Anatoly Fomenko shows the similarity in the names and, um, you know, they've invented different characters. Well, anyway, so Attila, the, um, um, what not Attila, I mean, Professor Fomenko, he goes through it saying that um, the great ones are the Wilkins. Yes, in, in uh, from the land of the Wilkins, they come from the north and they invade south or the Vikings. Yes, the great ones. Yes. And, the, and um, these people... Um, um, these people, um, what do they do? Yes, and um, they have a great king called Ot or Otila or Otter or Otor. Yes. So um, mm -hmm. the thing is because the thing is we're using modern language. Yes. Right. Yes. Ot, Otter, Otor. That's why the Quran also says Dul, Tul, Khan, Khan, Khan with the horns. Yes. And we don't know if this is a name or if it's a title. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and he's known as the Great Khan. Yes, these are within their documents. We don't even know how to pronounce these things. Of course, um, they've given these, um, you know, modern pronunciations. So um, th this king, he, he reigned over Russia, Greece, Hungary, and almost the whole of the Eastern Kingdom. He took over, and um, the thing is, he was invading um, Rome. Now, many people in Hungary, they're teaching people, Hungary is... Um, no, they're teaching people that Attila the Hun was invading Rome. So now we've got a problem. Um, the thing is, people can check this themselves on Wikipedia, that only 400 years ago, Rome, yeah, including all the villages, we, I'm talking within 25-mile radius or 25-kilometer radius, we can only find, you know, five or 10,000 people. Now, if we take away the children and we take away the old people because there's a high birth rate and we take away the women, that means only 2,000 men or 3,000 men maximum. So Rome didn't even exist. So uh, they're telling us Attila was fighting, um, you know, east and west. You know, they've added on certain um, fabrications. So now this Attila is Atta or Otto. Notice yeah. these things. Otto, king of Germany. Notice at the same time, if we add on a thousand years um, that they've put the forged history a thousand years, then Otto becomes king of the Holy Romans. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just to give one very simple example, because I posted this with, you know, I was thinking of a name. I was like, okay, let's pick Attila because you said something I had never heard about. And then someone commented even and said, actually, the name is spelled wrong. And I was already thinking, like, am I completely confused? But no, the yeah, English... it's not the, the name, it's a title. No, no, I'll no. give you an example. Well, I just, I just no. wanted to say that even here within the few years or within different languages, in Hungarian or whatever, it's written with two L. And in English, it's written with two Ts. So just understanding yeah. that even these small uh, changes, and you do it over a few hundred years, a few times, and then, like you yeah. said, Otto can become yeah, you know, all the, kinds of and things. And they need to know there's so many languages nearby, Bulgarian, yes. Macedonian, Serbian, just to confuse things, different accents. They did these things on purpose. Yeah. So now um, um, the thing is, so now um, let me send you, um, there's, there's um, a, a lot of research done um, after 
Anatoly Fomenko, and there's uh, many things people can check online. So now the thing is, if we go through so-called these documents by Piccolo, Piccolo Mino, all these Jesuits, whoever they are, uh, you, people can go through these documents that we can't even tell the difference if you was called Italy or Attila. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, if he's called Atta or if he's called Otto. Yes. So the thing is, and, and he was ruler of, of, of the Huns or the people with the horns. So he was actually the, the ruler of all Euroasia. So now there is a problem because many Bulgars are going to say, hey, we are the descendants of Attila. But then you can go to Bashkor, Bashkoria, or, ba uh, or um, um, Balkaria in Russia. There is Balkaria in South Russia, you know, um, um, south of Sochi. And they're going to say, no, we are Attila the Hun. This is our history. You, 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 can, you can go to Iraq and they're going to say, this is our history. And now this king who was called Ot or Ota, in England, they will say, no, this is our history. Yes, actually, because it was a global empire. This is something and they're trying to hide it. Yeah. And then um, uh, I've sent you this paper, the fictionalized Roman Empire. Yes. And the thing is, because the truth is the Roman Empire yeah, was in Rome and Rome was um, Istanbul. Yes. Yeah. So um, um, they falsified that. So, so now um, let me go through a few of these other things, because this is um, really important for the history of Attila the Hun. Um, wait, let me see. Oh, don't say I've lost it. I thought I had it right now. Mm, about Attila the Hun. OK, so now the thing is um, we've got um, the Knights Templar. They're in France and in Germany, and the Teutonic Knights or the Tatar Knights. Yes, yes. So we've got these knights or Tataria, um, uh, Tatar land means the fatherland. We've got all these knights, and the Vatican's fighting all these people. Now, in the fake history, they said the Knights Templar were were um, the Vatican's men for centuries. But no, the, um, the Knights Templar were the Knights of Jesus Christ as well as the Temple of Solomon, the mm -hmm. Knights of the Temple of Solomon. Yes. And so and um, these people had swords and um, many other things. And, and um, many of these Knights Templar mysteriously spoke Arabic. Now, people can check on Wikipedia and they will say the Knights Templar followed um, that their leader was mysteriously called Ba, means father. And uh, ba, or ba, uh, um, they say Baphomet. Now, this uh -huh, is very uh -huh. important because many people don't um, consider what is um, Baphomet. Now, the thing is, if people really think Bapa or Baba, yes, yes, and then there's Papa. So now if we separate the two words, their leader is, is somebody called Father Bapa Emmet, Bapa Emmet, Baphomet. Oh, yes. my God. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, um, um, the thing is, I found this information only because of the Quran. If the Quran was not there as the opposition, we will not be able to figure this out, actually. So now the, um, uh, the strange thing is they're following a, a, um, a priest or a leader who is mysteriously called um, um, Father Emmet. So now the thing is, if we, if we look at this in the Bible, it says that um, after Christ, um, the spirit of truth will come. Yes? You've heard of this, yes? Probably. You've heard <laughs> of this story? Um, they, uh, and um, the church says it's the Holy Spirit. Yes. Well, uh, um, in terms yes. of uh, the return of Jesus Christ or something like this? or Yes. yes. They say after Christ is coming the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they've, they've messed with the Bible. But the Quran says, no, no, no. Um, the, the people were told after Christ is, co is coming the Emet. Or in modern Arabic, Emet. Yes. Or Ahmed in, um, you know, um, uh -huh. in some... In some dialects, they say Ahmed. So Emet in modern Hebrew. Anyway, so now this Emet is coming. So now the thing is, the Knights Templar were followers of, of um, Baba Emet or Baf, Baba Emet or Baphomet, whichever language you want to say. In English, Baphomet, but, um, you know, um, you know, in some Latin, Papa Emet or Baba Emet, however you want to say. So they were following this father, Emet. So now the thing is, we've mysteriously got, yes, um, in the Quran, it turns around and says that um, Muhammad, or this prophet Muhammad, he is the Emet. And it says he's the Emet, and then it says, don't call him uh, Baba, 
our father. And the Quran actually says this history. It says, because he is not the father of any of you. He is just a human being. Uh -huh. Yes. And he is just a messenger that he's come with a message. And, um, um, uh, uh, um, you know, the message is the Quran with history, etc. This is very important. And then the Quran says that the enemy of the, this, this Emmet or the Prophet Muhammad is a guy called Baba Lahab or Father Lahab. And it says, don't call Muhammad. Yes, um, don't call him father. And now the word Muhammad is two words. Yes, it's Maha means great or mother. And then Emmet. It's a title, same like Katila is a title. Yep. Now it's become a name and it is also a name as well. It, um, if you want to say it's a name. But anyway, let's look at Maha. So now if they were calling him father. Yes, Mah Maha or Maha, Mahamed. Yes, because in Europe, in, in some languages, they say Mahomet. In France, especially, they say Mahomet. Yes, or Mehmet in Turkey, or Mahamed. Yes, now if we look at history, we find something strange. The Bible mysteriously ends, yes, the Old Testament, and uh, the book of Maccabees. And the book Maccabees has been removed. I'm saying it in English, Maccabee. But now let's talk in some European dialects. Yes. You know Maccabees, yes? Judas Maccabees, he's fighting against the Greeks, yes, for Jerusalem and fighting for God, and he refused idolatry. You know mm -hmm. this. It, it's mm -hmm. in Jewish history and in Israel. They don't teach it very much. But the Bible, um, the Vatican removed it. Yes, this book from the Bible, which is at the end, mysteriously. And um, his, his name, um, Maccabee, yes, is Machaba. 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 Uh -huh. Maha. Ba, father, father Maha. So now the Quran says, don't call him father. Yes. And then, the, uh, uh, so can you see what I'm getting at? Yes. This Maha Ba, Maha Emet, or Baba Emet. Yes. They, um, the Vatican wrote down. Yes, yes. He's called Baba I Emet. I mean, obviously the Vatican is very much into calling everyone your father, even though they're not biologically at yes. least. So <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, yes. But, but the, so the thing is, um, don't forget the history of the Knights Templar was written by the victors. They, yes, they defeated course. them and they yes. wrote it down. Same like the history of Afghanistan. All we know about this place is um, what the newspapers and, um, you know, these historians and um, politicians have said. But we don't really also, know. It also makes more sense than this opposition between the church and the Knights Templar that the church just made up that they were their men and that they were worshipping the devil or Baphomet and so on. Now makes a lot more sense if that's actually Maha Emet. You but know? Now, but so. now we've got a serious problem. Do you know what is the problem? If Muhammad this prophet Muhammad, yes, um, was the leader of the Huns, and the Huns are the barbarians in Germany, this totally changes history. Because they've told us, oh, um, Islam didn't spread while this prophet Muhammad was alive. And he, according, according to, the, to the history that we find, that's in Allah's Thai University in Cairo, or oh, the British occupied that place for um, you know for many decades, and the and um, yeah. the French um, occupied it, yes. And from what we know in Damascus, the British and the French were in Damascus and Baghdad, and um, these so-called Islamic history books that they've got in Tunis from the Zitouna mosques and everything, yeah, under the French administration, according to them, yes. Um, it turns around says when 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 um, the, the Prophet Muhammad declared that he is the Emet and he is the Maha Emet, yes, um, the great truth, yes, when, he, when this was declared, he says only a few people followed him, yes, and uh, um, only a few people. And when he died, it was only just w one city or two, Mecca and Medina in Arabia. But if we look at what Dante and um, other documents that are related to it, this Prophet Muhammad, he was the leader of the Huns and the Barbarians and the Alemans and the Vikings. Or Germanica, or you could yeah. say Northern Europe, and those people embraced him. Yes, and these people, they're fighting against the church. It looks like the Crusades was actually against the Vatican. Mm -hmm. It totally looks like that. Can you see? Also, this would relate to the whole iconoclasm, no? 
supposedly, like you said. Oh, the iconoclasm. Okay, the thing is, I didn't put this in my books, but um, the, um, the thing is, um, another, um, the thing is, Anatoly Fomenko said this, and the thing is, I'm not sure why he didn't go into depth in this. Uh, or maybe he had, a, he has, but um, or I, I, I've um forgotten. But um, about the iconoclast and everything. Now, Anatoly Fomenko clearly states that um, the Bible was uh, um, the Old Testament was written after the New Testament, and then it, it was still being updated in the 18th century, 17th, 17th, 18th century, basically. So now, if it's being updated, how can the Old Testament be inside the churches? How can the Bible mm -hmm. be inside the churches or in prayer buildings? Yes. It means it couldn't have been in the prayer buildings until after the 18th century mm -hmm. because the Bible wasn't even completed. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, see. Mm -hmm. So now um, this is one. And um, now let me show you um, um, it's somewhere in my books. Um, you've, um, you've probably come across it in the Jesus Christ book or the Crusades or Skull and Bones. I've forgotten which book. Anatoly Fomenko has um, um um, shown um, in his research that the Quran was being used in the churches. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, now the, um, the, this is um, this is um, something very serious. Um, let me let me just send you that that quote. Um, but um, anyway, it's in it's in Anatoly Fomenko's works, and it's in my books that he that Anatoly Fomenko says that um, in Northern Europe especially the Orthodox Church, it didn't exist as a separate church or separate religion. That um, the, the Muslims today in the Islamic world, and especially the Eastern Europeans, the Orthodox Church, yes, was one religion. Mm -hmm. It was not two, only two, 200, 300 years ago. And slowly with the conquests and separating the children and everything else, they created a new religion. Yes, mm -hmm. now the thing is, uh, many people are, um, are going to find this hard to believe. So now um, the thing is, let me go through this with you. Um, the thing is, um, you, and the, uh, you, because now you mentioned the orthodox art, what was you going to say? I cut you off, but um, you can complete it. Oh, I don't know if, I, I don't think I was saying anything about them in particular. Oh, there was something else I wanted to bring up also in reference to the whole Viking thing you said. To uh, fit with the title, Attila the Hun, I looked up some pictures and I was surprised at number one, on one of them, he was he was horned, just like we discussed. On another one, he had a had a hat, but he looked like Asterix, you know, this popular comic where he has like these wings on the on the helmet. Also reminded me of Hermes. And then also in a few of those images, it seemed like he had, I would say, like elven ears. Maybe this is supposed to look like dog ears. I don't know. But is there anything you can you maybe want to say right. about that? Right. Um. Of course, uh, they um, they um, do disgusting images to actually look bad. Yes. Um, so the thing is um, um, to make it look bad. But if we're going to go through the images, we're going to have to start from the beginning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is um, to start with the beginning um, starts with the you know the um, the the hist historians say that um, the the Vatican and Christianity started off in the Eastern Church. Mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this this would then just refer to Constantinople, no? Or Istanbul? Have you found it? Oh, now please repeat your last sentence. I didn't hear um, you, but I got the image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Allah in Kufic. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've sent it to you with the numbers there, one, two, and three. So they used the symbol of Allah and they fabricated the crucifixion. This is very important. I'll explain why it's important um, later, but um, because we've got, uh, um, um, we'll totally, um, uh, I'm going to get totally lost here now. So, um, uh, totally lost. So, let's go. Um, so, I'll continue from the part um, um, you said about the ears and everything and mm -hmm. the images. I'll show you how they forge images. So, now the thing is, Anatoly Fomenko has shown that Eastern Europe was the same religion as the so uh, uh, as um uh, uh, as the muslims and they were using the quran the bible's not even complete yes so only two three two three hundred years ago it's the same and then we've got that even even in these so-called um 
you know, um, you know, Christian history. Yes, the Huns, the Germans are the Huns, the Vikings, they're all Huns, the Horned people, the uh, um, Valkinos, Valkings, all these people are, um, you know, um, barbarians or Bar Aryan or, or children of Aaron or followers of Aaron. They were known as the followers of Aaron. They rejected the Trinity. They rejected the church. Attila the Hun openly rejected the church. Yes. So now the thing is, um, let me show you what they do with images and what they do with history. I, I, I've ne never shown anybody this. Yes, I was going to write it in a book. I was going to wait, but I'll bring it out today. Now, here is a man. His name is John Whitmore. He's in front of the uh, Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now the thing is, um, so, um, you know, the Turkish nationalist government. Yes, which was um, set up by the by the world order after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, and we don't even know what the the history of the Ottoman Empire. A lot of a lot of the photographs of the sultans and everything else of Hodges. Anyway, he this man um, um, was from Cambridge, Massachusetts, from America. He brings this team from the Byzantine Institute of America, and the, and they come in the 1930s, and they and he's close friends with Mustafa Kemal Atatürk and everything. I think here he is dining with that attack. You know, they're buddies and, and they've come because they got a plan. Yes. As you can see, mm -hmm. the people who, look, who are in this picture, the Turks and all of them, they don't look like what Turks look like 100 years ago, like these so-called Islamic type of people. So they're having meetings and everything, what they want to do. So they're being financed and everything and, um, you know, by the oil industry, etc. There's many things. How to carve up the Middle East? What are we going to do? How are you going to make money out of it? How are we going to change history? Anyway, what's more, this guy, um, he's from Boston, and you know, so-called Byzantine art and everything. Ottoman Empire has just collapsed and everything. And he goes with his team from the Byzantine school in America. Yes, the Byzantine Institute and um, the, uh, similar teams went to Greece at the same time. Yes, to Athens. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So now they go there and their job is to restore Hagia Sophia as an Orthodox church. But wait a minute, these guys are Americans and um, they're supposed to be Protestants and they hate the Orthodox church or whatever. And they're, and they're supposed to help in creating Turkish history. Yes. So um, the thing is, they don't hide it anyway. Yeah. People can study this. Yes. So now anyway, this guy, he goes there and then what do they do? Now, have a look. This is inside the Hagia Sophia. Now, the Hagia Sophia, if anybody checks through this, I know there's going to be Turks and Muslims who are going to say, no, we find this hard to believe. Yeah, but um, Islamic history is a forgery too. Anyway, here's Whitmore and his team. A few of them come, and they're inside the building. Yes? Now, this building, yes, they claim it was a mosque. Mm -hmm. uh -uh, claim. Yes, now Anatoly Fomenko has shown that this was one of the buildings that King Solomon himself built. Now, the thing is, um, uh, one of the temples of Solomon. But what were these temples of Solomon? Because according to even the Bible and the Old Testament, there was fire coming out of the temple. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So what does it mean by fire? Yes. So now, anyway, so these guys, they're at work, and there's no evidence that this is, um, this is August 1934. Yes. And um, their job, their job. Yes. Um, they don't hide it. Yeah. This is official history. These guys are there. And what is their job and their duty to transform this building into, yes, a, a, a Christian museum church for the auth to, to show proof that the Orthodox religion existed as a separate religion mm -hmm. from Christianity and from Islam. So now look, um, in 1934, work focused on transforming. Their job is to change the Hagia Sophia into a museum. So there's nine people originally in the delegation. Yeah, you can see. So now Mustafa Kemal is allowing this. I've sent you the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <coughs> so now it takes them, you know, they're at work <coughs> for the rest of the year and so on. And what do these guys do? Let me show you a picture of of um, Mr. Whitmore, the American, and his team and these guys, they've just walked in. And do you know what they're doing? They claim, now look at these pictures because you'll want to see this. This is going to totally make you think, what the hell are these guys doing? Have a look. Here he is mm -hmm. um, with his team and more people, more Turks are involved and everything. And have a look at what they're doing. Yeah, can you see the picture? Yeah. They claim that they found these orthodox mosaics. They claim they've just found them. 
where you can see them, they're drawing everything there. And they say, this has been covered up for 500 years. And they say, we found it's underneath the plastering. But um, if anybody looks carefully at the buckets and the paints and everything they brought with them, and you can see them actually drawing everything. Mm -hmm. They took these pictures themselves. You understand? Of course. Yes? Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. the thing is, no. uh, wait, uh, I'm sending you all these pictures. Put them on the videos. The world has to know about this, that it's a full forgery. The history of the Orthodox Church, no such Orthodox Church existed. Yes. And then it, and then these people who want to who want to know about these buildings. Yes. Uh, there's all these free energy and these um, buildings talking about advanced technology and everything. They're all ignoring Anatoly Fomenko. Oh, many of them now have noticed that because I've mentioned Anatoly Fomenko's work and Fomenko himself has said, no, the Quran was inside these churches in Northern Europe, not the Bible. Yes. So now because I've mentioned it, some people are saying, why am I mentioning it? Because it's important. Fomenko's research is not a joke. Now, have a look. These guys are actually painting on the walls. They're putting Greek letters. Look, look at the mosaics. They're putting up Jesus Christ and um, these so-called Christian Orthodox saints and everything. H have a look. Have you had a look? Can yeah, you see yeah. this forgery? It's, it's very obvious. This yeah. is just a, it's not just obvious. This is just ridiculous. Can you believe they're actually doing this? Now, at the same time, these teams, they went throughout the Balkans. And um, not only that, they um, if you check that in the 1920s, 30s, yeah, these teams were there, that they uncovered um, the area around, um, around um, you know, uh, around um, Athens, where they say we found all this, um, you know, um, around these uh, these Roman theatres and Greek theatres and everything. We've just found it all. Now, many people will not want to know this. Now, some people are going to say, oh, after Anatoly Fomenko said it, yes, we've now been lucky enough, yes, that we ha um, many people have just suddenly woke up and suddenly realised, hey, many of these buildings... Yes, that were built 500 or 1,000 years ago. Yes, um, you know, um, the, it couldn't have been. Um, and these star forts and everything, people are talking about it now. So now the thing is, and everyone's going to say, um, you know, um, I've sent you an example of a star fort. This is in Holland. They claim it was built in 1593. So, so now I've said, you know what the IS Sophia looks like in Istanbul. It's an amazing building. And look at the type of people they said built these buildings and these star forts. Have you got the picture? Show, showing these peasants in these villages. Yeah, it looks more um, like know, hobbits. Built these, built these places. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's just a joke. So now they're telling us a joke. Now the thing is in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in Western history, there is nothing whatsoever, not even a single document will turn around and say that these buildings were built, you know, uh, um, you know, by, um, you know, an advanced, like today, advanced and uh, a civilization with morals and ethics, uh, um, a great civilization. Instead, they're telling us Northern Europe. Savages, only savages. Savages, barbarians, morons, you know, killers. Yeah, Viking barbarians. They went around pillaging, looting, all this sort of, you know, just garbage. They're just teaching us garbage. Now, the thing is that everyone's going to say, hey, so now let's look at the opposition. The opposition is the Quran. And do you know what the Quran actually says? It, uh, now, let me send you a picture of the Hagia Sophia. They're telling us, you know, just in garbage. Look how amazing this, this building is. Even to go inside it, yes? And we see the pillars and everything that's, that's keeping this building up. The Hagia Sophia is amazing. And then they're telling us there's a building across the road and it's called Sultan Ahmed Mosque. Now notice the name, Sultan Emet or mm -hmm. Sultan Ahmed. Emet means truth. And um, it says the spirit of truth is coming. The Emet is coming after Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says, after me is coming this the spirit of truth. And they say it's the Holy Spirit. Yes. And um, mysteriously, um, that building is called Sultan Ahmed. And notice the six minarets. And notice uh, um, if you hold up the minarets, it looks like the menorah, the Jewish menorah, including the central dome, the seven. Yes. Have you noticed that? Yes. L let me just just, mm -hmm. just send you All this. All right. Mm -hmm. um, because the thing is, what the, and the, the menorah means um, you put a light, yes, or a candle, yes. 
So now, if anybody has a look at this, they'll say, oh, my God, I didn't notice. It looks just like the Jewish menorah, the candles, and the lights coming on. So who were the children of Israel? These are um, um, serious questions that um, nobody looks at. Just me, as, um, as we're on um, it, I have to bring it up. I, I was discussing this with Martin, with whom I was translating your yes. interview with uh, Exodus, and we spoke about, you know, strange names and so on, and we spoke yes. about uh, Kofa, which is one of those cities in relation to the whole Tartaria theme. And it's interesting that in German, you actually say Koffer to someone where you say, oh, he's a bit retarded or a bit stupid or something. And just now I was looking it up and here it says yes. it, it comes from Arabic and it means basket, which reminds me then yeah, of basket case. But then the other thing that came up just now, as you showed me the symbol, I saw it before, but now again, the symbol for Allah. Oh, oh, oh you're reading this from online? Okay. Okay, you're reading it from online. Well, what is the meaning in German? What did you say? So I was just saying that uh, in German, in colloquial language, if you call someone, you're a koffer, yes. it, it means something like, oh, you're a bit stupid or, you're, you know, you're a bit retarded or something. Yes, okay, yes. So, so just yes. how words yes, are being yes, used. Wait. And, and so just, just yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll let you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the space. I, I've stopped you. Do you know why? Okay, no, okay. No, no. No, 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 I stopped you. Do you know why? Because you are quoting what you're going to find online about the Arabic meaning of the right. word kufa. Kufa is very well known. Stop any Muslim and say, what is a kufar? What is a kufar? Do you know what it means? Somebody who is stupid and who denies God, even today. So now the internet meaning that you are going to find is based on the so-called fabricated translations and these things. This is why I've told people to be careful, because... I investigated the same word that you're doing, but I investigated it many years ago. I found the same problem. Now, what to do is look up the world for unbeliever, that he's stupid, that he disbelieves in, in, a, in a creator. He disbelieves in the scientific proof for a creator. And um, so um, they call them um, stupid. But anyway, the Jewish menorah. <clears throat> Yes, go ahead with the Kufa. I hope my information yes, helps. Yes, thank you. There is just yes. one more thing also in terms of these strange meanings and like Gestalt seeing of things. You showed me the symbol for Allah now once again. And strangely, it looks to me like a stick figure drawing of somebody. Yeah, the crucifixion. Yeah, yeah but it, sh it looks like someone, like the, the hand of somebody showing you the middle finger. That was the first thing that came to my mind. And I have no idea where this comes from in, in right. our culture yes. or something, but now, it's like by yes. now with Baphomet and yeah, so okay. on, I'm very okay, suspicious. Now, <laughs> now the thing is, now the thing is, if you will notice again, that um, one part looks like a thumb and everything. This is why the, um, the thing is, um, whoever designed uh, that symbol is actually from, um, you know, Spain. It, uh, um, it's from Spain and underneath is... Um, some, um, you know, writing from um, um, the Middle Ages or Renaissance or something. And the thing is, that is the symbol for Allah. But notice how the Vatican transformed that symbol into the crucifixion. Yes, the, that right. um, uh -huh. on one side, the thumb or the cup, that is where the spear is, spear is, and the two of the people who are at the crucifixion. Uh -huh. Yeah, I just sent you that uh, for... Um, um, this thing but um the thing is the important thing is that we don't get diverted because now about the temple of solomon and yes. um um the thing is now the thing is the quran says something now this is an official translation of the quran i'm sending but the thing is many people um don't realize what the quran is actually saying about king solomon now if we if we take into account um um, the 1,000 years fraud and the timeline and King Solomon being in the Middle Ages instead of the ancient times. In the Quran, it says that King Solomon, he built all these palaces and he built um, whatever these statues are or, or um, 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 images or something. I'm not sure if that translation is correct. And then it says he built all these, all these bowls like reservoirs. Yes. Yes. And um, uh, uh, on top of the and beside these reservoirs are big buildings that are stationary and they're and they're heating buildings where you where they're heating something like like an energy building. Now, if you notice that underneath churches, what you will find is that um, let me give you an example. Um, it's not just churches underneath star forts. Like, for example, there's a star fort in Africa in El Jadida City. People can find this online. And um, the thing is, um, 
Um, this is one of the few star forts that's in Africa. So um, because it's not in Europe, they haven't really modified it that much. What you will find is that there's like a reservoir or something that's underground. Yes. And then you will notice that, um, that the building on top, that the star fort, or some people will say maybe it's a church or whatever that's on top, that some people, that um, that building is where they're heating something. Yes. And um, these things are... Um, providing energy or heat or something. And, and it, it turns around and says that they're cutting, cooking buildings, that they're, that they're boiling things, and um, they're built in, in specific places. And um, the Quran says that King Solomon built these places in many places. And, that, and um, the Bible actually says that the, inside the Temple of Solomon, they were burning something or sacrificing something, and there was fire there. Yes. So people don't realize um, um, these things. But anyway, in the Quran, it says that King Solomon built these these huge reservoirs. Where are they? Yeah, well, I'm he thinking of the Taj Mahal, for things. example. The Taj Mahal is like a huge temple with the water around it. I'm not sure how new it yes, is. Or and, and then there's a river right beside it. Yes, it says King Solomon built all these waterways. So now the Quran is actually saying that he built these buildings that look like cooking pots. Now look at the mm -hmm. Hagia Sophia again. Or the, and it, it, in some translations, it says that, that they look like kettles. What does a church look like? A church... And there's round churches, rotunda churches. Many people don't realize there's so many round churches in England, in East Anglia, for example, that um, nobody knows what these um, buildings are doing there. Yes. And the thing is, if you, many kettles that um, if you look at, you know, from 100 years ago, people change the designs that they look like they've got a dome on top. Yes. A dome. Have you noticed? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, but just in case, because some people will say, what's David on about? Let me give um, some specific images. It's because the thing is, I was going to write about it in a book, but um, these days I'm too busy. If I never do, then I'm sorry to the world. People will have to check this themselves. Now, these stories are in the Quran. So this is um, how I found it. But anyway, the Quran says that he built these type of reservoirs or something. And then many people will say they're called cisterns and cistercians. Yes, so people are talking about this now, but the story is already in the Quran. But this means, just to and be clear, that this he would also have built the so-called aqueducts or whatever they say they have found. This would right. be a similar thing, right? Yeah. yeah, before we go on the aqueducts, I've just sent you an image, and this is um, going to make you think, this is a power station, I forgot which one, um, this is in England somewhere, have you found it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A picture of a power station. Yes. Notice the pipes coming out look like minerals. Now, this mm -hmm. is a boiling station and um, the walls are similar to um, these stone churches. Now, have a look. Yeah. Um, uh, in the, um, have a look at this one. All you've got to do is add on those things to the churches. And then we've got cathedrals. Have you seen it in the new picture? Because there's mm -hmm. many cathedrals in Europe that do not have these um, steeples and other things. Have you found it? So you would suggest that they have been altered and have been put there? No, no they have been modified. Um, you can find pictures. Um, you can find pictures of um church building. Yeah, it's like, for example, have a look at this. This is supposed to be Erzurum Mosque. In um, have a look at this ancient Erzurum uh -huh, Mosque okay. in Turkey. <laughs> yeah. Look at this building. What is this? Where is the proof that this is a mosque? Yes. So so now the thing is um um. Um, so now let me show you. Here is a picture of Ottoman Turkish Salonika. Have a look at this. They turn around and say, we don't even know what happened here. They turn around and say that in World War One it got destroyed. Have a look at all these minarets. Can you see them? Yes, yes. And they're going to claim that they're mosques. But now let me send you a picture of England, you know, 100 years ago. And look at all these minarets. Mineral, uh, minarets. Yes, um, that you can see. Do you know what they all are? They're, um, you know, like um, heating stations um, mm -hmm. where you're burning chemicals or refining things or energy stations for the mining. Can you see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between Salonika or Thessalonica, those so-called mosques, and that place there? Is there a difference? Can you see it? Yes. Well, only our assumptions about the place, I would say. Mm -hmm. No. Um, at first, you will say assumptions. So the thing is, it's because... Many people have not gone into debt. Now, the, now the thing is, um, um, we've got um, these buildings that are like um, places in Turkey that where there's been no invasion whatsoever.
ever in a thousand years. And then look at these so-called mosques that are blown up and they're telling us these buildings are mosques. It's a Seljuk mosque, mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, um, let me send you, uh, um, you'll find many of these mosques in Turkey. Yeah. Look carefully at these mosques. Yeah. Now you tell me what do you see. Uh, and you, it really looks like a to... power plant, like even, even a nuclear power plant or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> or well, you've seen these uh, mosques. You've yes, yes. These mosques but it Serbia? really depends on the quality of the of the furnace, whether you, it would look like a mosque or just looks like a small factory. Ah, okay. By the way, both those pictures are power plants. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. I lied. Okay. Okay. It's because I want you to use your brain a little. Yes. <laughs> so now the thing is. Now the thing is, I, I apologize for lying, but um, no, it's okay. yes. Um, <laughs> now um, let me send you a picture. Here is a mosque in India. Yes, um, this is a mosque in India today. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and notice the minarets. But here is the things a hundred years ago. Now look carefully. The minarets have been modified. Yes, look carefully. Yes, they are yes. not mm-hmm. minarets. They're chimneys. Yes, and somebody will say, "How can David say they're chimneys?" Yeah, I'm going to send you, um, here is one, <clears throat> not far from um, where I am in England. <clears throat> the same chimney, this is from Cheshire, Quarry Bank Mill. Yeah, we have what many such buildings, in- even in Austria and Germany, I think. These like brick buildings with this type of style chimney and so on. There's many. Even- wait, wait, uh, but wait, they, these are the same chimneys that are in the Taj Mahal. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed right. and, um, uh, um, um, mm-hmm. that mosque, um, India or Pakistan? Uh, um, I forgot which one. But um, as you, uh, can you see? Yes. So now um, let me send you um, yeah, the same chimney. So now they've just added on the minaret in the last 100 years. The minaret's not there in the old photograph. So these are not forgeries what I've done. So now let's go back to the, author, um, before, to the Orthodox Church. We've got a problem. These mosaics don't exist. They were just drawn on recently. It's a full forgery, mm-hmm. yes, of the building in um, you know, Constantinople. We've got a serious problem now. So the full history of the Orthodox Church in the Balkans, and these people are fighting to death with their neighbors who are who are um, Protestant or Catholic or um, Muslims. What are they doing? Even even in the war in the 1990s, people killed each other. Yeah. This is not a joke what these people have done. They knew that um, the thing is they had to hide these buildings because the Quran says that um, the, these buildings were boiling stations that people say are energy stations where they heated things and there were industrial buildings. The Quran said it before you, all you Tartaria groups. Now, the thing is somebody is going to turn around and say, why is David saying it? Uh, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to tell lies? Do you want me to just fantasize and make my own lies? Yes. Well, anyway, let me send you an example of these so-called churches that, that um, nobody uses. We don't know what they're doing in England. An example of all these round churches in the middle of nowhere in the countryside in England. Yeah. And um, uh-huh. there's, there's, um, there's um, hundreds of churches that are blown up. Yeah. You'll find them in, in South America, in Europe, in Mexico, everywhere. Have a look at this building. Yeah. This church. Did they blow up because they were industrial buildings? That's what it seems to look like. Now, have a, have a look at this. Now, um, they're claiming, um, um, ah, that power station I sent you before was Battersea Power Station. So now um, the thing is, um, the nuclear power stations, yeah, and um, the thing, um, uh, and other buildings that we call mosques, yeah, are suspicious. Here is a mosque in Egypt. I've been to this one. Now, this one is very suspicious. People don't even use it today. Yeah. People don't even use it today. We don't even, and uh, of course, they've redecorated them. Yes. Ibn Tulon Mosque is a classic one. Yes. And the thing is, people are going to say, what are all these? Now, I've sent you that building with the domes, and then you can compare it to a modern power station. Yeah. This is India, Indian Point's nuclear power plants. Yeah. And you can compare it and um, the, um, to the minerals. Have you had a lot? Um, yeah, to the buildings it in, looks in Egypt? eerily similar. So the idea would be that they were some kind of power stations. Uh, now, somebody will say the idea is because they've not visited. Now, I've just said, now, the, the reason why I said it in a strong way is because I've been to these places. Here is the so-called Ibn Tulon Mosque. Now, the thing is, Ibn Tulon Mosque, yeah, from the air, 
Now, if you, anybody who goes to Egypt today, they'll notice that the area surrounding it is very poor, as if the residents have come recently. And they've been to Elon Mosque from the air looks like this. Yes. And the people who are living there, um, uh, uh, there's no way they had the capability to build that building. Um, you know, um, in the timeline that they've given us and um, uh, with um, the sort of history that they've given us. Yes. So the thing is, what are these buildings doing in the mid in the middle of Cairo? I found, um, um, you know, the, the, about 100 of these strange buildings that um, are out of use. And they're saying, oh, these are ancient mosques. People used them a few centuries ago. This is what they're telling us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. And now um, let me show you an example in a church. Now, here is a church. Because many people um, um, have not had a look at them carefully. Now look at this church and look at the sides. Yeah, there's uh, many similar churches like this. Now look at this power station carefully and look at the sides. This is um, uh, a factory, uh, an industrial building. Maybe it's not a power station, it's an industrial building. It's made of similar stone or whatever, like um, the churches. Now have a look. Can you see the similarity? Can you see it? I'm checking it out now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yes. Have you noticed? Okay, so I'm trying to compare those chimneys. I guess what's really confusing about it is the ornamentation. Not the chimneys, the sides. Yeah, the, the sides. sides. Yeah. Yes. The sides, they've redecorated the sides on the churches. Okay, that's so what you I'm know, saying. Yeah, the, this decoration makes it makes it a bit confusing, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there's, so, the, there's so many. I um, mean, it's like um, the thing is, even in the Tataria groups, people look at this. This is a power station industrial building. It's so easy to convert these buildings into churches. Right. It so is, the idea would be case. that basically all those power stations, whatever they did exactly, were redressed as different religions to give everyone a reason not to kill each other. Wait, uh, no, I've sent <laughs> you some buildings that are industrial buildings, not yeah. just power stations, like they used for industrial buildings. So right, the thing could is, be different things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so they've modified, look at this, this is supposed to be a mosque. You can see what they've done there. They've just added on the, uh -huh. it's in um, DR back here. Look at this mosque complex. What is the difference between this and, you know, um, you know, church buildings? And they've just put on, um, it, uh, now it, in Europe, you've just got to add on the tower and the steeple. Here they've added a minaret on. Can you see the yes, fraud? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. It's just a total fraud. That um, um, the thing is, this is why people. Um, I've noticed these Tatari groups. If they're not going to, if they're just going to be racist, I can I, I I call them openly racist. And thinking, oh, we're not going to have a look at the Islamic world and anywhere. If they're not going to look, then they're not going to see how how these so-called ancient mosques are exactly the same like churches. Like, look at this this cathedral that's in France. I'll be cathedral. Look on the outside. What is the evidence that that is not an industrial building? Mm -hmm. There is nothing to show that it's a church. Can you see it? Yeah. Nothing mm -hmm. whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. And yes. just to, to say it again, yeah, I can see it because I really figured it out when I was in the countryside where there is also one of those buildings in the middle of nowhere next to a castle, supposedly. And there I really noticed that if anyone goes to a church or maybe also a mosque, most of the things inside the altars and so on, they are just like wooden furniture. So this is the easy part to imagine. Then you add in the mosaics yeah. inside, takes a bit of time. And then maybe a little bit more effort, you have it on the outside. But anyhow, it's yeah. very popular for many of the important ones that there's always construction going on, you know, so they had plenty of time to add stuff yeah. on and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I sent you a picture of what it's like inside different types of power stations underground they have to have a reservoir yes yeah right. now mm -hmm. under many of these churches we have these crypts they've thrown bones inside them skulls and bones now under, yeah. underneath mm -hmm. now have a look at inside mm -hmm. now um the thing is i was going to write about this but this is chartres cathedral crypt yes now the thing is many of these places were called cisterns Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Notre Dame Cathedral crypts. Let me send it you. Um, uh, and the thing is, many of these places are filled with water, and uh, many people don't understand. And many of them are broke down, no use. And the thing is, they're basically identical 
to many of these power stations and other things, Bio Cathedral Crypt, they've just redecorated it, drawn a bit of drawings and something, Jesus Christ or whatever, and everything. And they're making people say, oh, it's only a few bones of saints or the dumped, killed people, you know, so-called fake pictures of angels. Same like the Hagia Sophia Temple. They've just drawn it only in the 20th century. It was mm -hmm. only done in the 20th century. Now, if somebody's going to say to me that um, something else, same like, let me just show you, um, it's just a, is is just a total joke. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You can see it. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. see. It. Yeah. I, I'm looking for pictures of the cisterns, but I don't have any ready. You know, but El Jadid, El Jadida is a good one because Morocco. Nobody bothers to go there, and they haven't modified um, the third world or the Islamic world yet. But the thing is, they're going to turn around and say, the Portuguese, the Jesuits, the church, and the rest of these boys, they came here, and they built this place. And um, the thing is, you'll find videos online of it. And then the thing is, you'll think, what the hell's going on? Underground cistern? Under, under these churches, cistercians? Yeah, some people have sort of like figured it out so now the quran tells you clearly even there it sorry just like you said there is cistercienza it's, it's an order cistercians is an is a catholic order no of monks or something yeah even. now they say it's a catholic order who said it's catholic so the thing is these orders like the order of the knights templar look at the name again the knights of christ of the temple of solomon solomon yes and freemasonry secret is solomon and now the quran tells you about Solomon and says Solomon built these huge waterways and these huge huge bowls yes that look like reservoirs with buildings that are there that are he that are heating obviously heating the water and they look like kettles and they look like um you know with the chimneys are the sticks coming out of kettles yes so the Quran already tells you this so now the thing is uh, when the Muslims have been saying this for centuries Everyone said the Muslims are crazy. Now in the Tataria groups, yeah, they've turned around and started saying, oh, these buildings resemble, you know, industrial buildings and power stations. Um, didn't you look down on these so-called Muslims for centuries? Oh, you still look down on them and you still don't want to consider that Anatoly Fomenko said, hey, the history is different according to that. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then some of these people are saying, why is he bringing the Quran? It's because of the Quran, it made me re-question. Yeah. It, it made me re-question that An Anatoly Fomenko said, this is the temple, um, one, um, a temple of Solomon. Yes. And he, he said they, um, they're cla um, they claimed it was a church. And then, um, you know, now they're trying to claim it's a mosque. But the Quran doesn't say that Solomon built a mosque. The, the Quran says Solomon built these buildings and under the Hagia Sophia, I'm, I'm still looking for it under the Hagia Sophia, is, um, you know, these so-called cisterns or whatever, Istanbul um, cistern. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it's so amazing. It's so big. I mean, the, Hagia the one Sophia. part that's part of the official history is always to say, oh, the Romans had these nice baths and so on, or, you oh, know, in Hungary and so baths. on. There's so many places. Oh, yes, so I'm just saying, places, yeah. We call them bats. Now look at this. Do you know when you look at this and you go underground in Istanbul? So now this, whoever built the Temple of Solomon or whoever built the Hagia Sophia, look at this place underground. Yes, when you go down under under um, um, Sultan Ahmed. Now I mentioned Sultan Ahmed. Do you know why? Do you know what's so crazy? Everybody, uh, anybody who looks at the geography of that area. Now the Sultan Ahmed um, area, let me send you a map of this place. Yeah, because the map, you will soon notice, oh, my God, um, many people, um, why haven't they realized this? Um, let me just um, show you a map. Yeah, churches. Ah, I was on the wrong page. Um, let me see if I've got a map here. Uh, well, a map of the Bosphorus. Yes, the, um, I can't find it. So um, let me see. Now, now, now the Bosphorus. And um, uh, right. Um, the thing is, the Bosphorus, um, as somebody will notice, um, I'll have to write in Hagia Sophia area. Map of that area. Oh, I missed out the letter M. Because it's very suspicious, because hardly anybody lives on, in that area. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is something else I want to get at. Yes. 
that um, if somebody looks at an aerial view, I totally examine the place where um, the, these mosques are from the air. Ah, yes, I found a perfect picture. Oof. Or otherwise, and people will think, um, oh, David's just saying this because it is so strange, yes, that in that area, there's too many mosques anyway. They call it Sultan Ahmed area. And there's too many mosques in that area. And what doesn't make sense is that hardly anybody lives in that area. And surrounding that area within, you know, I'm talking within 30 minutes, you know, God knows how many, another, t another five or 10 huge mosques that, um, you know, that could hold thousands of people. And the thing is, it just doesn't make sense that somebody's going to build a mosque across the road. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. But, um, uh, have you been there? No, no, no. I was just uh, thinking of all the, even in Austria, I, can't, I don't know how old they are, but like there's these small churches everywhere, you know? Next door to each other, yes. Like everywhere, and it's in Czech Republic also, and also Prague. even they look like they could be like small chimney buildings or something, you know, like a small building yeah, with a big chimney. Industrial buildings, mining industry, and many people are calling it free energy. No, people worked in the past. Civilizations worked in the past. They built, yes, and then um, you know, the, the Vatican and the boys came along and they destroyed, and then they hid everything, changed the history, and now they're rebuilding. Yes. Well, anyway, I sent you a picture. Have a look at this. And you'll think this is totally suspicious. Look at this. What type of... Uh, nobody's living in that area. And we've got huge buildings that um, mm -hmm. they're saying, oh, they're um, for mosques for, you know, thousands and thousands of people. We don't see anybody living in that area. Yes. Uh, um, the thing is, and anybody who's been there, yes, many of the houses were only built, um, you know, in the, in the last 20... Right. Uh, in the last 50 years. Now, the thing is, if you look, if you look at um, the, uh, um, there's not enough population for the number of mosques that, that are just, there. And what everything. would this suggest that these factories were like autonomous or whatever they were doing? They didn't need large residential no, these buildings? buildings or... were industrial, industrial buildings and uh, industry is linked to power. Maybe they were used for power production and industry both. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, because many of these buildings are similar, somebody else will have to investigate but still which there... building was built. Yes, but still there would have to be something about this technology or just the history that it has to be hidden in this way. Is it only about hiding the history or do you think it's also hiding about different types of technology? Now, the thing is, um, the technology doesn't matter anymore because the thing is, they hid it and they're bringing the technology out. They brought out the power. And if many people are going to say, hey, we're working to pay power. No, you're not really working in many countries because, you know, money is on paper and they control the food supply. They print the money. They've created a lot of artificial state jobs, company jobs. Yeah. Many of these companies that you can't trace on the stock exchange. This is why I wrote about the, about the modern world, Donald Trump, the economic data to show with the 19 the falsification of economic data all these you yes, know artificial yes. jobs because they're they're keeping you busy they control all the land food production in hungary they haven't controlled all the land yet yes but if you go to germany you'll notice that basically all the land is all these corporations by license to the people in power are manufacturing the food yeah. And then they don't even produce um, uh, many of the food in many of these places that the food is wasted or they don't even bother. Yes, yes. And then they're producing it elsewhere. Yes, it's a total joke. But anyway, the thing is, we have very genuine problems because we started with Attila the Hun, who's also <laughs> known as King Arthur. Now it says King Arthur had his 12 knights round the table. Yeah, or, King, or, or Thor of Scandinavia. And then somebody said it's a myth, but I'll reply to that in a minute. So now there is the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, 12 tribes. So Attila the Hun, he led the 12 tribes and everybody else. Now, now the thing is, if you have a look at Attila the Hun's empire, it spread from east to west. Now, they're just going to show us that it was from Asia to Europe. But the Quran goes a step further and says Attila went to the, to the east and to the west. And he went to where the sunrise and sunset and he defeated the Gog and the Magog. And he is the one who built a barrier between the Gog and the Magog. Now, now the Quran mentions this now. Uh, um, and, it, and, and it shows that Attila the Hun is greater. Yes. Now, the thing is, many people are going to be disputing about Attila the Hun. Look at the look at the Christians. They're disputing about 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 Jesus Christ. Yes. 
Um, look, look at the modern followers of Judaism. They're disputing about Moses. Look at the Muslims. They're disputing about the Prophet Muhammad today. The thing is, if the world is going to carry on doing this, or, uh, and, um, you know, it's like hero worship, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they're not going to get anywhere. What they've got to realize is, Attila the Hun, he came, he went. The Prophet Muhammad, he came, he went. The Prophet Moses, he came, he went. And they betrayed him too. Yes, even after everything he did, they betrayed him and uh, uh, um, uh, with their civil factions, yes, called Kora or Korath or Korath or um, Karun and, um, you know, with the um, idol worship system and the banking system with the gold, they still betrayed him, yes? So the thing is, if they're, um, you know, because some Hungarians have written to me, yes, and they've turned around and said, hey, this, that, Attila the Hun, he didn't do it because he's Attila the Hun followed Attila the Hun. He did it because he believed in the creator and the God. Now, it's up to you if you want to believe in a creator and a God. And if you are a follower of Attila the Hun, this is not about following him. This is about being good, a good mm -hmm. person. Attila, his, his enemies, he invited them. He gave them food. Yes. And even if they modified the story, yeah, he, he gave them wealth. He welcomed them. Now, there is many people who follow Attila. And, and of course, there are, there are many um, problems with, um, you know, the Roma and the gypsies and um, the Jews in Hungary. But um, some people are saying, hey, look, there's Jews amongst us. Hey, people can live anywhere. What about the Hungarians who are millions of Hungarians who live outside Hungary? Mm -hmm. Yes, they have to remember that. Same like Hungarians are guests in Canada and the United States. There's Jewish people who live inside Hungary. And those Jews, they don't look like the Jews who look like in, let's say, um, you know, Iran, for example, because they are Hungarian people. Right. They are Hungarian people who accepted the Old Testament that the Vatican falsified. And they don't realize, yes, that um, parts of it have been falsified. Yes. So now, uh, and then there is the Christians. They are following the New Testament that the Vatican has falsified. So there is many um, um, followers of Attila the Hun who are saying, hey, the Christians are this and that. It, it makes my heart bleed, etc. If you want to, If you want to do something, build a better civilization. The gypsies are welcome. The Jews are welcome. Everybody is welcome. Now, if somebody is saying, somebody said to me, the, uh, um, the Jews are buying up in Hungary. Look, they've got so many synagogues here. How much has China invested in Hungary? Uh, <laughs> yeah. How much have the Germans invested in Hungary? Hey, um, how much have the Arabs invested in Hungary? Millions. How much have the Americans invested in, in um, Hungary? How much have the Turks invested? They've invested more than the Jews. So this is something that the people in power, they want this racism and this division. Right. They it's a know, diversion always, of course. Diversion, yeah. Yes, they know. They know that um, um, Judah and the Vatican, the, ju the judges, yes, the European Union is now the representative <laughs> part. The, the, new, the new judica, yeah. <laughs> the new judges, yes. Yes. Who are making all these resolutions and demands for, from Hungary. Yes, all the time. You must do this. We'll fund you for this. We'll fund you for that, <laughs> etc. You've right. got to um, bring these standards in. Yes. And, um, for, um, you know, there are many people who are opposing the transgender agenda. But the ultimate game is transhumanism. Yeah. Yes. Which is even further, which is, this is why they were called humanists, the Vatican's agenda. Yes, so that mm -hmm. there is no such thing as a human anymore, where you mix humans with animals, with machines, with you mix male with female. That there is no such thing as a human anymore. Yes, this is the policy of humanism, uh, and um, this is what the the Vatican's objective was, you know, a few centuries ago, and this is this is what, you know, um, the Huns were fighting for, and the Huns, yes, they are from the children of Israel. This is what the evidence shows. Yes, they are the barbarians or, or the followers of Aaron or the Aryans. Yes, the Germans are too. Yes, they are Aleman. And the Aleman were also called the, the Swabians or the Swabi. Yes, because the word uh, um, Slavi or Swabi um, in Arabic means that they were the praiseworthy, you know, followers of the one God. 
and and like you like you mentioned um last time, you know about the Arab streets. I cut you off last time, but um today um, I'll, um I'll, I'll it's it's in my book um. I forgot in Yes, New I New think New I had New actually New first read it in your book and then I saw it again yeah. online and I was yeah. wondering where did I read this first and I was like oh yeah. my god it's so obvious yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now uh, now the thing is um what I've done is um um I, I'm 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 going to um give it uh, I think it's in the book Lemiri. I've actually forgotten which book. But anyway um the thing is um um, um the thing is um not just in America but um in many places they were calling um um you know they were calling um the people arabs yes the europeans were called arabs and um i said this to um you know what's his name andreas too that um you know the arabic language um came from the north and went south and um many of the people in the middle east couldn't even speak arabic and they had dialects same like europe had dialects but then the mm -hmm. nationalists nationalism was a poison to divide everybody yes and then they they modified the languages to create these modern languages But um, let me see where um, um, this thing, um, because this is um, very shocking information. Where is it? Uh, don't say I haven't got it. I'm sure I saved it for you. Um, I, th I thought I'd prepare it, but um, uh, looks like I don't have it. So then just to make sure we'll make justice to the ah, title. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So the thing is so yes. that you can put it in the videos because this is very important. Yes. And um, I'm glad you pointed this out because it's not just in America. This was in Latin America where, where Armenian children disappeared from Turkey because it's strange. The Turks, you know, in World War I, they, they were having about five, ten kids, children. Yes, at that time, it's, it doesn't make sense that the Armenians are going to say the Turks took all our children uh, and uh, um, uh, they needed more population. Yes, is one theory. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas we've got evidence that, um, you know, that um, uh, when the French and the Italians and the Americans and the British occupied, um, um, you know, half of Turkey. Yes. Um, the thing is, mysteriously, all these children were being shipped out through Greece. Yes. Well, um, and they used the Greek army, whoever the Greek army was. Um, you know, maybe that was the French army. We don't know. But anyway, these children got shipped off to America, Latin America. Well, anyway. Um, I've sent um, what you said, nickname for these um, children who were being brought from Europe to America after the 1850s. Yeah, because they came from Eurabia or Europa. So they were called Ar Arabs. Yes. So mm -hmm. so this um, because they came from Arabia. Eurabia is Arabia, Europia. Yes. So so the thing is, um, you know, this is clear, but um, people are going to say, oh. Uh, They can say what they want. And then the orphan trains, the orphans, the word orphan is a modification. They've just modified this word in the last 150 years. But the orphan children were called Arfans, Arbans, Arban, Arabians. You understand? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and they were brought mm -hmm. from Germany, Holland and everywhere. That, um, you know, they updated the dictionaries, even with their updated you know, modification and a joke, you can still find it, that the word orphan, they claim it came from ancient Greek, whatever, yes? Um, uh, and then they say, oh, it came from proto, they give you these strange yeah, words. Yeah, it always oh, comes from another new thing they just invented and claim it's yeah. old. <laughs> Proto-Indo-European. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> what the hell does that mean? India, Pakistan, Iran, Turkey, Greece, to Italy, to Germany, and then it's mixed with Sanskrit, Arba, Latin, Orbus, yes? And German word, Arbi, Arabi, yes? It means hair, hair, or the, the heir to the throne, yes? So so these people, the, it was just Arabia, Europia, yes? Uh -huh. And then they changed it to, to an E. But, um, you know, things are, are very clear, yes? So now the thing is, um, but um, I, I'll say this because this is, Very important. You know, people will say, what's he talking about 19? Now, many people know that there's many organizations, communist organizations in China. Um, you know, there's the Knights, uh, modern Knights Templar, the modern um, uh, um, Masonic organizations, modern Rosicrucians, CIA, FBI, FSB, many um, organizations. And everyone says the number 33. Well, well, the flower of life has nothing to do with death. 
Yeah, I'm going to say this because um, many people sh should um, know this. Now, the flower of life is just geometry so that when you teach children in school, so that they can learn how geometry and mathematic, mathematics works. Now, I've sent you a picture of the flower of life. Now, the flower of life has got 19 um, circles. Now, when you, when you put the flower of life in a three-dimensional shape, there's 33 balls. Yes? Round circles. Right, 33. I saw that, yeah, uh-huh. Yes. Now, the thing is, inside the flower of life, um, what you'll notice is that there is a cube inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now um, let me go through this because the thing is, people will say cube, Kaaba, Mecca. Yes, this is very important because many people, are um, they've got no idea of um, what, what um, the old world system is or the new world system. People don't um, don't understand these things. So um, the thing is, I'm going to try to make it easy for people because what the what the people in power have done, they want you to think is to do with devil worship. They want you to think it's to do with with Masonic, this, that, everything. But the truth is, the truth is, this is just um, simple knowledge. It's just mathematics. It's about knowledge, and they don't want you to have this knowledge. Yes. They don't want you to have this knowledge. So um, let me um, um, just go through the flower of life so that um, people can understand this. Yeah. Um, the thing is, um, let me show people. So um, the thing is, um, it starts from the alpha and the omega. So I'm, I'm going to show them. And you'll find this throughout the land of the barbarians. You'll find this in Hungary. You'll find this in Germany. You'll find this in England. You'll find this in Italy. The alpha and the omega symbol. Now, the alpha yes. and the omega symbol... Yeah, it's simply Allah. Yeah, somebody's going to try and say it's Allah. But um, since when? They should go and watch Sesame Street again. The letter A is A. Ah. It's an A. Ah. It's not the letter E. Mm -hmm. Yes? Sesame Street. I think I should watch Sesame Street again. Hey, this is a letter A. A for Allah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It just show, and But no. Many of these people will say no. Well, anyway, um, I've sent you a picture of um, Alpha and Omega again mm -hmm. inside the circle with the six points. Now, they're trying to tell us these barbarians who had this Alpha and Omega, they were dumb idiots. Now, now if, you, if you look at the symbol, yes, the flower of life, and then, um, yes, they call this, um, the beginning of it, um, the flower of life, um, they call God the creator, the Alpha and Omega. So now, um, let's look at the seed of life in um, geometry. The seed of life, um, is um, the flower of life with six of the circles. Then you've got se seven circles, the seed of life. This is in my book, Matrix. And, um, you know, many books, it explains the 19. So the 19 is from the, the flower of life. So now you've got seven circles and you've got the um, seed of life. And now the, um, when you um, put, put um, when you look at this, I'll explain um, in the diagram. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the flower of life, then you've got the seed of life. And then um, you um, you expand it. When you, by the time you expand it, anyway, what you get, yeah, my book explains it in in a um, in, um, more simple mathematics, the matrix, and some other books. What you get inside the flower of life is that um, you get six circles of six or six six six. Yes, um, it's simple mathematics. And now, if, um, the thing is, there's nineteen circles to create the six six six. And if you do it three dimensionally, you get thirty three. So, uh, so in sim in simple terms, yes, you can create six six six. Yes, um, you know from the light flower of, of death, and it comes from nineteen. Now inside here, yes, um, somebody will say, what are the six six six? The um, different circles. I've put them in red, blue, and green. Yes, the six six six. Yes, inside there. Now, um, when you look inside the flower of life, yes, what you will get is a cube. Yes. And now to make the cube a bit more simple, to show everybody, yes, it is in a three-dimensional format. I've sent it you there, and you can see the cube. So now, the, now in the old world order, people have to think, yes, people will say um, Arabic once again. Now they're teaching us, and they're telling us it's algebra, yes, to do with mathematics and geometria or geometry, because I've just shown geometry. This is the geometry of flowers and everything to explain it, to explain it. Now, geometry from there, you get gematria or gamatria. Yes. Now, in the old world order, they used Arabic. 
Yes, that's why Arabic was the vehicle to learn mathematics, science and everything. And um, they can't deny this because there's too much evidence that um, it was in Arabic because yeah. they destroyed a lot, but there's too much evidence. So now we've got algebra. Now, if we focus on the Arabic language, Jibrael means angel Gabriel. Gabriel is English. Yes. So now we've got Jibrael algebra. And that's why people say angel numbers. One to nine. Alpha and Omega. First and the last. One nine. And that's why it's 19. My books explains it a bit more. So now the thing is, now the thing is, as you've noticed, the Kaaba is, is, is in the shape of a box. This is where you get the English word books from. That you get knowledge from books. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So that's why they call it a box. And that box is a books. It's the knowledge. It is nothing to do with superstition, Kabbalah, Ka or oh, by the way, Kaaba, cube, Arabic word once again. But no, they're trying to say it's to do with, with Hebrew and everything, modern Hebrew. That's a lie. Yes, Kaaba. Yes, cube. Yes. Uh, um, you know, the Kaaba in Mecca. And then it's called Kabbalah. It's because... Um, the Kaaba is to represent the book, box, book, box. So when they say Kaaba Allah, it means the book of God. Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you beginning to see what I'm explaining? So now the thing is, many Jewish people wear it on their head because they're trying to say, um, we should learn the knowledge of God and and um, you should, um, you know, carry it. But the Muslims, they memorize it. They went one step further. <laughs> they put it inside their head, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. So so now um, le, le, um, I'm looking for something, you know. Um, um, the thing is, um, yes, so now the thing is um, knowledge, yes, knowledge, books, and box. So the thing is... Um, I'm going to show somebody. Uh, I'm going to show you in pictures now because people. Sometimes I turn around and think, "Hey, you know, why could, uh, um, uh, um, never mind." But anyway, box. So now the thing is, so somebody will say the Muslims are worshiping knowledge. No, they found the knowledge and they're worshiping the Alpha and the Omega, and mm -hmm. then the Muslims bow down on the floor because do you know? Do you know? I think uh, many people. Um, I think many people should have a look at this themselves. Um, yes, um, you know, I'm sure many people have been to a funeral. Yes. Um, yes, many people have been to a funeral. And um, let me show you what, what um, happens at, um, at a funeral, because this is very important. Yes. What you will see. Um, I, let me show you. This is very, very important. Yes. Um, what what you will see is um people are devastated. If you if you if you go to a graveyard, yes, you'll see mm -hmm. people who are devastated and they're on the floor and um they're beside their loved ones. So now when the Muslims what um I it took me a long time to understand this. Because even I couldn't figure out what they do. Yes, when they did their prayer actions. At first, when they start praying, I noticed they lift their hands to their head. Yeah? That mm -hmm. is the same like, you know, if somebody's pointing a gun at you, you lift your hand and you say, I've surrendered. So the Muslims, when they start to pray, they're communicating with God. They lift their hands and they say, we've surrendered. Then when they get on the floor, there's, uh, they're showing that, that um, you know, they're together with the earth. It's a symbol. It's symbolic. They're together with the earth and everything. And then um, they've, um, they say that we've learned the knowledge. So, so then um, they say the knowledge came from the book and the box is supposed to represent the books. Yes, we've not learned the knowledge. We've accepted the information and we want to be a better person. And we worship. The word worship means love. We love only the, the Alpha and the Omega or the Creator. And mm -hmm. that's why they actually call the Alpha and the Omega Allah. But um, oh no, the Vatican is going to say it's L-E or L-A. Yes. And, um, you know, but um, people should have a look at Sesame Street again. And they will see the letter A is not a letter E. <laughs> yes. So now yeah. the thing is Kabbalah is just about knowledge. 
So now the thing is in the old world order, people learned this knowledge and what did they do? Yes, um, let me show you what um, people did in the old world order. Um, what people did in the old world order, yes, is um, the old world order was not so long ago. Yes, what they did was they learned the Quran and they learned this knowledge, um, you know, from, from the Kaaba or the box or the books of God. They learned the books of God. When they learned the books of God, they graduated that they put the box on their head. And this meant that the box, books and the boxes inside your head the graduation hat have you got the picture yes i'm familiar with this yeah mm -hmm. yes and then they're wearing the black black thing yes to show that this is this is um sacred knowledge secret knowledge and the word sacred comes from the word sahra yes um Arab, uh, uh, which just happens to be an arabic word again so as as we can see yes this system was here before. It is nothing to do with worshipping a cube or anything, but the New World Order wants you to, you to think it's mysterious, wants you to think the Kabbalah and all these things are crazy because they are the ones, they are the ones who are building triangles, circles, and um, boxes all over the world because they want you to be lost and mystified. Here's a triangle, here's these strange circles or whatever they're building for whatever they're, reasons the pathetic reasons are let me just send you a you know they built them around the world now somebody's going to point out and say hey have a look the new world order built this but that um just because the new world order wrote about attila the hun doesn't mean that that is the truth do you see just because the new world order wrote their new testament for their new world Yes, and said this is the true version of the history of Jesus Christ doesn't mean that that represents Jesus Christ. So now what they've done, have a look at these things. Yes, many people online are going crazy about them and they're just being superstitious and they're coming out with their theories, but they don't even have a look at the old world order and have a look at what it's all about. Look at these. And they're showing here's um, a cube that's here in New York. Here's a cube, you know, in California. This is because the New World Order is trying to put their knowledge out, their books, mm -hmm. their garbage. But but the opposition from the Old World Order, yes, um, that um, the Muslims today, they are saying, no, we learned the knowledge from the books that God gave and the knowledge that God gave to the so-called, um, you know, messengers. Like, for example, even in the Bible, it says, and God taught Adam the names of all things. God taught him. Yes. So the Muslims turn around and say that the books are the books. Uh, um, the true knowledge comes from God. And that's where the word cave comes from. Kava, kaf. Um, and that's why it was called, um, um, you know, cube or, or cave. Yes. Um, you know, the secret knowledge of God, that God gives you this knowledge. Now, the thing is, what these people are doing on the opposition, they're using this. This same mathematics, which is three-dimensional, it's mathematics as well, and they're using it to spread lies and tell lies. Yes. You see? Yes. It's because somebody will turn around and say, hey, this geometry, um, we use it in accountancy and in finance. Now, when you do an account, an account sheet manual, you will do input and then output. How much money you invested, how much has come out, um, you paid this bill, you brought something, you sold it at this price, and it, then it came out. Now, if you do it, if you do like a cube three-dimensional accounting, you will do um, you know, forecasting, yes, which is advanced accounting, whereby um you will do um, you know, analysis and you'll guess things. So now what these people do in the Kabbalah on the opposition, what they do is they use the same system it is in marketing and in media, and they use their lies to create the history, that what they've done is, one, they put their input to show this is the input of history, two, they calculate the output, which is confusion, and then three, they'll put in all the extras to make sure that everything is confused. You see? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. So this is, what, uh, this is why... Um, this is why people call these people the cabal or, or, or Kabbalah. And now the, the thing is, people wanted to know what is the point of view on the Islamic side. Now, the thing is, why the Muslims have never explained this to the world, I don't know. 
Anyway, Raphael, any questions? Go ahead. Oh, Based on today's thing so far. Yes, as always, there's plenty of questions, but also most of them that I put down either have become irrelevant. And the one thing I had even put down was the question, Mohammed is Baphomet question mark, but you actually explained that today. So thank you very much for that. I, uh, to end this out, I just wanted to make sure that we do uh, justice to the title that you chose in terms of uh, King Arthur is Attila yeah, the Hun. You already yes. kind of mentioned it, just if there's anything uh, to add on to this, uh, that it, yeah, that it's complete the, for you. But then it might not be um, uh, King Arthur. I don't know, because we um, today we spoke about many different things. We talked about free energy, or you could call it free energy um, power stations. Yeah, of free course, energy free energy, energy always goes well. <laughs> yeah, maybe yes, we'll go for that. <laughs> because the thing is, the thing is, um, it's very important this, people don't realize. Can you believe that they've just walked in in the 1920s and 30s? They've walked into Istanbul after defeating, yes, the last so-called, you know, um, empire that represented this Quran that is fighting the New World Order. Yes. And then they've just walked in and then they've said, hey, we are going to redecorate this place to turn it into a museum. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. The decoration is, is um, you know, ancient. We've just, it's actually old. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see them painting it and doing it there. And they're saying, oh, it was actually hidden under so the So maybe, maybe to break plastic. it down and make it very simple, the very least we could assess or assume right now is whatever those buildings were, there were some kind of industry that means at yeah, the very, yes. just, just yeah, one I sentence, the industry. that means at yes, the very least why? this colonization and rewriting of history was at the very least used to de-industrialize huge regions yeah. uh, and make them economically dependent at the least right yeah uh, i'll give you an example um if you're going to use these posh words people will get confused it seems like you and me i want to rule the world i want to be the boss i want to turn everybody into my dogs i want i i want, I want to chill i want to chill man <laughs> in the american way so what do i do i want my ferraris I want everything. I want my, um, you know, airline jets. I want my palaces. Yeah, I want to own my skyscrapers. So you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. We got to make up all the fake history. We got to do all this and that. So that's why they did it. It's just greed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's greed. It's nothing else. It, the, there was nothing else to it. And now the thing is, if people want to be divided and whatever, like there is going to be some people who are going to say, oh, no, Denmark, we were not the Huns. No, the modern definition of Hun has changed. And somebody who is in Hungary is going to say, oh, no, we are not the Vikings. It's because they've given classification. They're doing this right now before everybody's eyes. That um, The thing is, one person, I've noticed this in the, in the Islamic world. I'm an Iraqi. You are a Palestinian. You are a Jordanian. You are a yeah. Syrian. Uh, in North Africa, I'm Moroccan. You're Algerian. You're Tunisian. These borders didn't exist. There was no such border between Hungary, Bulgaria, Germany, Poland, Austria. We don't, how, how, how can you say that somebody in Vienna or he's got German blood and somebody in Budapest has got um, Hungarian blood? What is the difference? Yeah. yeah, There is no proof whatsoever. And anybody who says I've got proof is lying. Is lying. It's same like, it's like, same like somebody um, in, in um, New York saying, oh, I'm American. Uh, uh, imagine this in um, 500 years time. Oh, um, Donald Trump was the president of this country called Alaska. Somebody else will say, no, no, no. Um, king Donald Trump, he was, he was king of Texas. Somebody else will say, no, no, no. Um, his army migrated from California and he invaded um, you know, New York and Washington DC and he took over with his army. No, he was mm. the ruler of everything. So in the same way, yes, there are going to be um, people in Hungary who are going to say, Attila the Honey, he was ours. Yes, right. and then there's going to be people in Turkey who are going to say, "No, he was ours." Yeah, yeah, makes all the sense. The yeah. Arabs are Shattered going to say, empire. "No, he was... Shattered empire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was a global empire that started off after the Exodus from Moses. Yes, this is where it started. Yes, and it, and the, and this is why people call it the Empire of God or the Kingdom of God. 
Yes, Christ was one of the men who was found in this kingdom. And then and then after after the prophet Muhammad and, and it, it says that he is the last or the final, this empire disappeared after him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Think about it. This is why Anatoly Fomenko shows the apocalypse or Armageddon or Armageddon. We'll have to talk about this next time. Romageddon, Rome. Yes, mm -hmm. Armageddon, Rome, Armageddon, Rome. Yes, that um, you know, the apocalypse and all this thing has already happened. Yes, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. he says this. Um, and the thing is, but um, there's the other thing, like um, the coming of Christ may not be, um, you know, part of Armageddon. Armageddon could be separate from apocalypse because different um, versions and different things. These Vatican documents are not clear. Actually, yeah. um. I, I'll go through these Vatican documents next time that um, we'll actually open up some of these manuscripts um, in some parts right. of the world that when people see this, that even you are going to think, oh, my God, this is worse than I thought. <laughs> All this time I looked at these manuscripts and these museums like, you know, that are found in Bohemia or that are found in Sofia or found in Venice <laughs> or in Florence. If you can actually see how they're creating these manuscripts right now. Then you yeah. do you know what you're going to think? Oh my God, I cannot believe this, David. Well, even really though I'm very believe. interested in history, in this sense, I luckily never get so far as to get so deeply into those things as to try to make sense of it because I could just sense it's so convoluted, it's so strange. So thank you for an alternative perspective, but I'm looking yeah. forward to looking at those and everyone can check themselves. Yeah. Again, thank you yeah. very much, David. A lot of yeah. amazing information, okay. as I'm sure everybody okay. listening agrees. Yes, let's let's leave it at that. Yes. Okay, yes. Have a nice have a nice evening, Rafael. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Yeah. Okay, yes. Bye-bye.